Uh, this is next slides from the Holy Innocence Episcopal School. Um, their religion class, the head, the teacher came in and said that um, we're, no, we're no longer going to say, hey, guys, you're all going to say, hey, y'all, and I want you to s practice this. Right now, we're going to all say it together, hey, y'all, because that's not an inclusive statement, and not everyone identifies in that way. Um, the next <laughs> few slides are... Uh, hold on one second. Yeah. Uh, we've got a full room here. Uh, when anyone is um, at the podium speaking, we're going to respect them. We're not going to allow any outburst. I uh, just want to make that very clear. Thank you. What is going on in the schools? A lot, it would appear, but little of it seems to have much to do with educating young people. Who pays your salary? Shame on you. What had been planned as a typical school board meeting in Virginia's wealthy Loudoun County this week devolved into pandemonium. Shame! with hundreds of parents flooding an auditorium to accuse the school system of teaching their kids that racism in America is structural and systemic, something the school board denies is part of the curriculum. Things got so heated that the board members eventually walked out, leaving the police to deal with the unruly crowd. When politics infiltrate schools, it's a sad thing, but it's also a very natural thing considering the government technically runs the public school system and determines funding for it. And local school board positions are voted on in local elections. Nobody listens to me when I say you gotta vote local. It will have the most felt impact on you and your family and your community. Even if you don't have school-aged children, pay attention to what goes on with your local school board because those children are a part of your community and they will grow up to be adults in your community. Now, as I'm sure you all know by now, because I feel like I say it in like every other video, I live in Texas and the things going on in Texas give a lot of us pause. Our state government is trying to siphon money out of the public school system so that private schools, most of which are religious schools, can get some of those public funds. I know that I talked about the Texas voucher program in another video we did back in July, so I'm not going to rehash the point, but if you want, you can check out that video to learn more about it. Now, just outside of Beaumont, Texas, which is over on the east side of Texas, a middle school teacher was fired for assigning an unapproved illustrated version of the Diary of Anne Frank to her students. The spokesperson for the school district said that the teacher read a passage from the book in which Frank, who was barely a teenager when she began writing her diary, described male and female genitalia. Again, we're talking about middle school kids here, kids who are around the same age as Frank was when she first wrote these passages. Now that said, there are versions of the text that omit those passages, but the particular version that was assigned to this classroom remained loyal to the original text. I am a literature purist. I don't personally love the idea of altering any author's work in any way, especially not after they've died, but I'm not sitting on any school boards. Another district in the Dallas-Fort Worth area removed the unabridged diary from its own library, and this graphic novel edition was removed from a high school in Vero Beach, Florida. Now, I will let you decide what the real motivation was for removing this particular book from school libraries, but it is a shame to discount the messages of an entire book and deprive people of the experience of reading a book just because some people don't like one or two passages within it, passages that aren't even particularly relevant to the rest of the book. People are going to feel differently about this, and that's fine. I think a somewhat reasonable argument could be made for the abridged version to remain in schools in the name of compromise. Sure, if I was a mother or a teacher, I would be willing to meet halfway on that point. Overall, though, we're falling back into puritanical purity culture, which, as we've seen historically, does not serve the youth well. I've read The Unabridged Diary, as I'm sure many of you have, and this 13-year-old girl doesn't discuss anything that other 13-year-olds aren't already thinking about and don't already have questions about. We literally learn through reading. We experience the world through books. We explore different thoughts and ideas and perspectives by immersing ourselves in texts and discussing the concepts within them. That's what school is for. In middle school, and especially in high school, the students are or should be mature enough to handle the content of the Diary of Anne Frank, especially when reading it under the guidance of a teacher. Moving on, also in Texas, a black 17-year-old boy was suspended over his hairstyle the same week that Texas outlawed racial discrimination based on hair. 
First of all, policing people's hair is ridiculous. It's like policing someone's skin color. And for something like this to still be happening in 2023, it's embarrassing and indicative of wayward priorities in education. A school in Texas is defending its decision to suspend a black student for more than two weeks over his hair. That student's name is Daryl George. He's just 17 years old, and as you can see, he has his hair in twisted dreadlocks. The school first suspended Daryl at the end of August and then just suspended him again yesterday. All of this is despite a new law in Texas that just took effect. It's called the Crown Act. The acronym stands for, quote, create a respectful and open world for natural hair. And it prohibits, the law prohibits racial discrimination based on hairstyles. The school states that the boy was not in compliance with the dress code, which states that boys can't have hair past a certain length. Why? I have no idea. They say it's a grooming stipulation, but as long as it's well-groomed, then what difference does the length make? Girls have long hair and it's not a problem for them. And when I was in high school, the scene kids would have had a very hard time with those very aggressive side sweat bangs. Still, the student kept his hair twisted and tied above his eyebrows and earlobes as per the dress code. His family is now thinking of suing. Now there's more to be discussed in Texas, there always is, but let's move out of Texas for now and head over to Georgia. A right-wing lobbyist for Education Veritas spoke at a Georgia Senate committee hearing, complaining that a private school teacher wanted her students to say, hey y'all, instead of hey guys, because it was more gender neutral. Seriously, she took time out of a hearing for this. For this. I say y'all a lot, as I'm sure you've all noticed. Uh, I also say guys a lot, and in that context, I use it as a gender-neutral term. I've been saying that since I was a kid in New England, and I say it here in Texas, but some people might disagree with my assertion that it is a gender-neutral term when addressing a group. Some could and do argue that it's a symbol of the patriarchy and that women are addressed using a term usually reserved for men, but mixed groups of men and women are never addressed as gals. And that's a discussion that can be had, and I'm sure some of you will have it in the comment section. Maybe I'll change my mind on all of this later, but sometimes I wonder if discussions like this need to be had at all. There are simply more important things to discuss, especially in regards to what goes on in classrooms. And whenever you take a discussion like this one out of the political microcosm or off of social media, they become almost non-issues. You find that most people in real life aren't bothered by things like this in general speech and just in general company because context matters. Most people who speak this way aren't doing so because they're trying to perpetuate patriarchal norms, and most people don't take it that way. Language and culture are always evolving though, so maybe the term will go away in the future, or maybe its colloquial meaning has changed so much already that it's far enough removed from its original meaning. When you isolate something from its context, you distort its meaning. You can overthink practically anything into oblivion, especially if you're trying to push a larger and more insidious agenda. But generally, if you're going to overthink something, you should be careful to not remove real-world practices, culture, and considerations from the discussion. The woman in this video is wasting everyone's time with this, and I'm glad she was laughed at. I think people should be laughed at when they do funny things. Also, saying y'all in the South isn't exactly groundbreaking. Anyway, there are more stories like the ones we've discussed here that could be discussed, like the teacher in South Carolina whose students reported her for discussing race in the classroom, but I don't want this video to be forever long, so I will leave it there. All I'll say to wrap this up is that I really wish schools would just focus on education and not get caught up in the things that they've chosen to prioritize over the one thing that they're actually supposed to be prioritizing. No one is teaching your kids to be gay. Sometimes they just are gay. I have math to teach. I literally don't have time to teach your kids to be gay, even if I cared enough to. I don't. I want to teach them literacy and numbers. Numeracy, if you will. If you've spent time in a classroom, you'd know it's hard enough to get your kids to put their name on their papers. We do not have the power to change a part of them that has always been part of them. And that is math teacher Alyssa Morano. She spoke out at a Hernando County, Florida school board meeting. The county is on Florida's Gulf Coast, a bit north of Tampa. And the district gained notoriety recently when the Florida Department of Education began investigating a fifth grade teacher, Jenna Barbie. Miss Barbie apparently showed her class the Disney movie Strange World. The movie contains a scene where one of the male characters says he has a on a boy. The teacher, Barbie, 
resigned. And this particular school board meeting stretched on for eight and a half hours as students, parents, and teachers, including Alyssa Morano, hammered the hostile anti-LGBTQ plus environment. Students are watching their teachers being picked off in a witch hunt. They're learning that people of a certain group don't matter right now, and I would hate to break it to you, but more of your kids were already a part of that group before they walked through my door. That was under someone else's watch, potentially even their parents. <gasps> Our students are learning that if someone is different from them, all they have to do is be a bully and their existence will become political. We can hop in our Hernando County time machine and go back to 1950 and remove rights that we don't care for. Of course, removing the rights of the LGBTQ plus community seems to be a priority for many conservatives, including Florida Governor Ron DeSantis. In 2022, DeSantis and the Republican controlled legislature in Florida passed a law prohibiting classroom instruction on sexual orientation and gender identity in elementary school. According to many teachers, the don't say gay law has made schools less safe for LGBTQ plus students. In May of 2023, DeSantis signed a law banning gender-affirming care for minors, restricting such care for adults, and eliminating bathroom access for transgender people. And DeSantis has helped members of anti-LGBTQ plus organizations, including Moms for Liberty, get elected to local school boards, including the board in Hernando County. For many teachers, the aggressive and hostile policies now in place have become too much. More than 50 teachers have resigned from the Hernando School District alone, and that now includes one of their best math teachers, Alyssa Morano. This gay teacher who accepts her students exactly the way they are outscored the county average by 15% in geometry and outscored the state by 10%. And now a sub will take my spot in my cold, bare classroom. A sub because Murano resigned. Her students, who did far better than the district and state average, will now have a new math teacher. Murano's desire to teach in a more progressive environment is understandable. School should be a place for learning math, science, and language arts, not a place where kids are taught or encouraged to hate one another and hate one another based on gender or sexual identity. This is where things are now in the state of Florida. And all because some conservatives believe that being LGBT plus can be flipped on and off or taught like a teacher teaches or flips on or off a light switch. Florida deserves better than this and our nation deserves better than these asinine school districts and states like Florida.